is Catholicism a false religion? The most crucial problem with the Roman Catholic Church is the belief that faith alone in Christ is not uh, sufficient, is not sufficient for salvation. You see, the Bible clearly and consistently states that uh, receiving Jesus Christ as Savior by grace through faith grants you salvation. Let's see what the Bible says in John 1.12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Okay? And also John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And also the Bible explains there are so, so, so many verses which talks about it's all a belief. It's all about faith and what you believe. Okay? Let me just show you one more. By, for by grace are you saved through faith. You see, it's all about faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works. So works are not needed for your salvation, lest any man should boast. Okay? So Catholicism refuses that salvation is by faith alone. And of course, you can go and read... Uh, um, uh, Acts 16.31 is all by faith, Romans 10.9-10, uh, uh, and also Romans 10.13. It, it, it's, it's all faith. But the Catholic, they refute that. The Catholic Church rejects this completely. And uh, the official position of the Roman Catholic Church is that a person must believe in Jesus and be baptized and you see the nature of their baptism is also very creepy there's nowhere where the bible says they just pour some water even jesus when he was being baptized he was totally immersed in water and now this time of um, the pandemics i see some uh, priests they're actually using those sh those uh, water guns and they are trying to shoot the water to the babies now it's even <laughs> it's just a drama and uh, you see, Catholics, they, 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 the official position of them is that a person must believe in Jesus and be baptized and uh, receive the Eucharist. <laughs> this is what they say also, must receive the Eucharist along with all the other uh, sacraments, all these other things. I don't know what they are actually. Um, and obey the decrees of the Roman Catholic Church and also perform um, all the works of the Catholic Church, different kinds of works, all these spiritual works so that you can get salvation. You have to counsel the doubtful, instruct the ignorant, admonish the sinner, comfort the sorrowful, forgive injuries, bear wrong patience, pray for the living and for the dead. All, all these works you have to do and uh, you know, give to the poor and, and many others. There are a list of many, 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 many Catholic works that you have to do so that you gain salvation. Not, not to continue, not to do the works. You see, you see, the Bible here tells us, let me, let me just show you something here. The Bible says, for by grace you are saved through faith. So you are saved through faith alone. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But after you've been saved, we are his workmanship. We are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which he has before ordained that you should walk in them. So the works are not part of salvation, but they are a proof that you have been saved. Now, when you do the good works and help the poor and do this and this and preach to others, and, and the kind of works in Christianity are not the kind of works which are shown by the Catholic Church. Okay? There's nowhere in the Bible we are told to pray for the dead and things like that. And there are many, many, many other weird kind of works in the Catholic Church. Now, uh, Catholic divergence from the Bible on this, uh, on, on this, because they, they, I've shown you all those kind of works that they want uh, people to do, obey the decrees of the Roman Catholic Church, perform, perform all those meritorious works, and and uh, you make sure. They also say that you make sure that you don't die with any mortal sins, etc., etc. There are so many stories. Now, this ca Catholic divergence from the Bible on these most crucial issues. 
that is salvation okay they deny salvation by faith alone you have to put in some works mm -hmm. um, this means that uh, Catholicism is just a, a false religion okay Catholicism is a false religion you know if if a person believes what the Catholic Church officially teaches he or she he will not be saved any claim that works or rituals must be added to faith in order for salvation to be achieved is a claim that Jesus' death was not sufficient to fully purchase our salvation. I remember a quote which uh, the Pope Francis quoted some time back. And he said that the cross shows us a different way of measuring success. Ours is to plant the seeds so God sees to the fruits of our labors and uh, if at times our efforts and work seem to fail and produce no fruit we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus and his life humanly speaking look at this uh, Jesus ended in failure the failure of the cross now do you think that the cross was a failure do you think Jesus dying for our sins to redeem us from our sins was a failure you see why these these guys are false prophets and they teach wrong things because they, they say they, they try to say Jesus uh, he, he did not fulfill anything and even his death was for nothing so they don't believe in the death of Jesus and and of course we know that Jesus himself he died to set us free he satisfied the wrath of God with his own death at the cross he reconciled man with God through his resurrection so Jesus is not a failure but he gave us mercy so when you you keep on listening to these people you will end up uh, being lied to and you cannot be able to be saved if you're following the Catholic uh, doctrines and uh, also you have to understand while salvation is by uh, is by faith okay salvation is totally by faith alone uh, comparing Roman Catholicism with the Word of God, there are many other differences and contradictions as well. The Roman Catholic teaches that uh, many doctrines that are in disagreement with what the, uh, the Bible declares, they say that uh, it was orally taught by the apostles. That's what they try to say. And uh, this includes... Uh, some of the things that they, they teach and they say, oh, you, you have to observe this, you have to observe blah, 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 all those kind of things. Now, they, 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 they talk about uh, apostolic succession. This is a false doctrine. The, the worship of, uh, they worship the saints. The saints. And um, you, have you ever gone into a Catholic church and you look in those windows and those places and there are so many saints and uh, even in the uh, Catholic people's houses you will get in there and you'll see a lot of idols and dead people and you ask yourself, is this a museum or what is really wrong in this house? If this is the church of God, why are all these idols? And the Bible says do not make any graven image, any idol in heaven above, in the earth and even below. Don't make any image. But they have made so many images and they worship them and they kiss their feet. They, they try to worship these saints and, uh, and to worship Mary. Now Mary did not say anywhere that she needs to be worshipped. Plus Mary is not immortal. She is mortal. She died and uh, she is in heaven. And the Bible says the dead know nothing. So would she be praying for you? Mary, pray for us. You, you look at uh, how people are deceived. You look at an old man like this. And he's deceived praying for just uh, putting uh, his prayers and his trust on just some cement or some doll. And uh, calling it, uh, you know, God and Mary. And it doesn't make sense. People are just so much deceived. Don't be deceived like these people. They are really, really deceived. They, we're not supposed to pray to Mary in any way. It's not. It's not. And others, they, they, they pray to the Pope. They pray to the papacy. They do infant baptism, uh, like I've shown you before. Uh, trans, transubstination. I don't know if I'm spelling it well. Uh, plenary indulgences. The sacramental system. Purgatory. Have you ever heard about purgatory? Purgatory is uh, where they say when, when somebody dies in the Catholic Church, they, they go to be burnt a little 
you you know you get burned for your sins a bit and then now you go to heaven do you think god who is a loving father will want you to go and burn a little my friends where you go is not purgatory you're going to hell and you'll never get out of there once you get in that fire of purgatory you'll get you'll never get out of there is for eternity you either go to heaven or go to hell full stop the bible says uh peter told us that uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord so is there a purgatory in uh, in uh, in heaven if you're absent from the body when you die you're either present with the lord or you're present in hell so they claim that uh, you know their members family members can pray a little they can pray for them and uh, as they pray as the prayers are being answered you know they are slowly coming out of the purgatory those are the things that they say and uh, this is just a false cult because uh, they try to tell people you have to do a lot of mess those mess i don't know is mess or mass they they, they 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 do a lot of them so that uh, as the, the the as the priests are getting more money in the prayers you know every time they come to pray you have to pay them eh? So they pray for your dead loved ones. You they pray for them. They pray for them until now their soul comes out. If the Pope was really good, he could have prayed for all of those who are in uh, those purgatory in that hell, and they could have come out. So while Catholics are claiming all this, uh, they are they are claiming um, uh, scriptural support for these concepts. None of these teachings have any solid foundation in the clear teaching of Scripture. All these things are based on Catholic traditions, not the word of God. In fact, they are all clearly contra uh, contradicting the Bible principles. If you go to Catholic uh, uh, Facebook page, they say, there is a quote here which is, says, What is tradition? It is important to keep in mind what the Catholic Church means by tradition. You see, they keep traditions. Uh, they are saying it does not refer to legends or mythological accounts or does it encompass transitionary customs or practices which may change. But uh, tradition is the oral teachings, oral, not written teachings, oral teachings of the apostles that have been handed on from generation to generation through the popes and bishops and the Catholic Church of the catholic church the word itself came from the latin word tradilo which means something that is handed on you see they teach traditions there is no place where we are told to uh, follow what paul said out of the bible maybe paul was telling his wife i i i love my to eat my fish when it's uh, if you're cooking for me some fish make sure that is a dry fry now we take that one as a doctrine and we say oh you see, Paul talked about uh, fish has to be dry fry. So if you make some wet fry, that's a sin. Because that Paul said it in an oral way, but it's not written. There are many things which the apostles said, but they don't make any part of the doctrine because they're not in the Bible. Because the Bible is the final authority. And even the Catholic Bible is full of traditions. They, they put in their traditions there and a lot of stories. And when you look, when you look at Catholic Church itself, have you ever asked yourself, it, it looks like um, some performance of cults, uh, all these kind of things, uh, you know, raising the candles and uh, a smoke and the darkness and uh, some weird clothings and weird music. It, it, it all looks like a cult. It's like you're in some satanic den. Don't, don't you see those kind of things? All these things is just traditions of men. They don't teach anything from the Bible. They teach just traditions of men and what they think about and what they think. Were they there in the time of Paul in the first place? They say, and remember the Catholic Church was started around 325, 325 AD by Constantine. And remember the apostles, the last apostle was uh, the apostle John. He died in... Um, uh, around 90 AD after writing the book of Revelation so he was the last one around that time and maybe Apostle Paul and the others eh, that they died around 90 AD so this religion was started by Constantine around 325 AD who was a ruler and he wanted to gain power as a ruler so he knew if I mix um, uh, if I mix what does he call if I mix uh, rulership with uh, religion then I'll be more powerful I'll be like a god and people will uh, and also they were trying to they were trying to water down the gospel of Jesus Christ they, they used to call 
uh, the, the people who believed in God and who followed the teachings of Paul. They used to call them Paulicians. And they killed so many of them. And if you go back to the story of Catholicism and murdering people, it's so much. So much. Just the same way you look at it. These people, they, they, are, they are not as holy as they seem. Full of blasphemy, full of killing people. And if you just look at something called the Spanish Inquisition. yeah, This one was out of the topic, but let me just show you. Spanish. Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. Just three. How many people were killed by the Catholic Church? Yeah? How many people? How many people died? Let me show you. Uh, how many people? How many people died in the Spanish Inquisition? There are how many? There are how many? There are how many? Let me see. Let me see. Uh, they are not showing here very clearly. But uh, it's estimated. It's estimated that uh, almost fifty to. 80 million people were killed in the Spanish uh, Inquisition. So many people. And you will ask yourself, why would the, a church which talks about God and talks about uh, 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 things to do with uh, you know believing, kill all these people? Just because these people did not want to say that uh, they, they did not want to be saved by the Catholic Church. All these people, they were hanged and they were tortured by the Catholic Church. Almost 8 million people killed by the Catholic Church. For sure. And you're there saying that uh, these people meant it for good. They were tortured so much. Just go and read about the Spanish Inquisition. And there's so many other things about how the Catholic have tortured people over the days. And tell me if this is a, a, a group which you think can save anyone. No. Just a bunch of liars and hypocrites. And telling people after that, after all that torture... You will go still to purgatory. For sure, you, you, you have to ask yourself about this, okay? You have to ask yourself about this. And uh, it's very, very, very quite important to understand about this, okay? So now, something else that we, we, we have to check. And, uh, and uh, about this, let me show you here. Uh, in regard to the question... Are Catholics saved? I like to tell you, th this is a more difficult question to answer because um, it is impossible to give a universal statement on uh, the salvation of all members of any denomination of Christianity or those who claim to be Christians. Because not all Baptists are saved, remember that. Not all Presbyterians are saved. Not all Lutherans are saved. Salvation is determined by personal faith in Jesus alone. You have to make sure you believe in Jesus alone for your salvation. Okay? Not by titles or denominations, identifications and things like that. It's basically by believing. So, despite the unbiblical beliefs and practices of the Roman Catholic Church, um, there are genuine believers who also attend the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> because... There are many Roman Catholics, probably, who have genuinely placed their faith in Jesus. And if they have placed their faith in Jesus, because I'm, I'm not the one to choose who is going to heaven or is not going there, it all depends on the faith. So for those who have not placed their faith in Jesus alone, they are not saved. But those who have, they have. Because Christ alone is the one who saves. However, these Catholic Christians are believers uh, because of what Jesus did. But they are not believers according to what the Catholic teaches. Because if, if they think they are believers out of uh, all these Catholic uh, teachings and all these ca kind of teachings of the Catholic, then they are not believers. You see, there are, they are people who totally put their faith in Christ. And the Bible, as the Bible says, that even if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, God is not looking for huge faith. He's looking for you to place completely your faith in Him. And it doesn't matter uh, if, if you're saying, oh, I'm, I'm not as much, I, I don't speak in tongues, I don't do this, because I, I'm not that deep. No, it, it's not about that. He says, put your faith in Him. Trust in Him in all things. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, he rose again, according to the scriptures. There are people out there who understand this fact, 
but of course there are not that many yeah? so don't uh, lie to your servants because if if you're still being corrupted by the catholic church then how would you know the whole truth you will not know the whole truth you'll just be there and being corrupted and, and uh, uh to varying degrees the catholic church teaches from the bible at some point and uh, points to Jesus as the savior. That, that's, that's one thing you have to understand. And as a result, people are sometimes saved um, by believing that Jesus is the one who died for their sins. But uh, the Bible has an impact whenever it's proclaimed. You know, the Bible is a very powerful book. The word of God is life. And it gives salvation. And it has impact whenever it's mentioned. So you can find there are some people here in Catholic who have heard that and God has spoken to them. Remember Cornelius. Cornelius, he was just a good man. He did not know about, uh, you know, Jesus dying and all those kind of things. Uh, he was just a good man. And he, and he tried as much as he can to do what is right. And God sent uh, the Apostle Peter to Cornelius to come and preach to him and tell him the truth because the word of God is powerful and he got to be saved. The same thing, there are people who are there blind and lost and they are trying to put their trust in Christ and trying to this and this and this and God opens up their eyes even from the same Bible that they are reading and they get saved by putting their trust in Christ absolutely. But if it's about the Catholic doctrines, my friends, uh, it's not possible for you to be uh, saved because the Bible, the Bible itself is very powerful. Remember what the Bible says in uh, the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah uh, 55 verse 11. See what the Bible says about this. It says, uh, oops, uh, Isaiah 55 verses uh, 11. It, it says, uh, it says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. So you see why it's very important. If someone is reading the Bible, and that's why the Catholic Church tries as much to make people not read the Bible. But in the Catholic Church, there are others who also read the Bible. See, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein to I sent it. So the word of God is powerful. And even if sometimes the Catholics, they try to tell people, no, 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 don't uh, listen, don't do anything. Uh, you have to listen from what the priest and the mother church are saying. Don't read the Bible because they really deny people to read the Bible. And remember even the dark ages. It was a time when the Catholics were, they, they were, they were hiding the Bible from the people. It was only the priests and the, 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 all those they call their, their bishops and uh, those people in white robes. They are the only ones who could read the Bible to, their, to, to, to the people. So you have to understand this, okay? That uh, the Catholic Christians can remain in the Catholic Church out of ignorance of what the Catholic Church uh, truly stands for. There are some people who will just stay there, but they don't understand what it truly stands for. But they read the Bible and they pray and they talk to God and they put all their faith in Christ, okay? And you will see them, God, uh, you know, saving them. But... Uh, uh, but uh, one thing that you have to understand is that it is very, very difficult to be saved in the Catholic Church. You have to really stay away from it. Because the, the Roman Catholic Church is, is not your home, it's not your mother church, it's not all these things that they try to say. No, that's, that's not. Catholic Church is just is, is a cult in some way. Just them using the Bible does not make them right. But God can use the Bible to teach you and to preach to you individually because of his word, not because of the church. So at the same time, the Catholic church also leads many people away. Okay? It leads many people away from genuine faith and relationship with Christ. They really try to lead people away. And the unbiblical beliefs and practices of the Roman Catholic church Okay, so many Roman Catholic Church, like I've told you, okay, they have often given the enemies of Christ an opportunity to blaspheme. They try to create idols and what and worship Mary, worship men. They, they have created that opportunity for people to blaspheme. And the Roman Catholic Church is not the church that Jesus Christ established. It's not. It is not a church that is based on the teachings of the apostles as, as they claim. Okay. Because as described in the book of Acts and the New Testament epistles, while Jesus' words in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, 
remember Jesus' words in Mark 7, 9 that were directed towards the Pharisees. They actually described the Roman Catholic Church. What did Jesus say in uh, Mark? Let me show you. In Mark 7, 9. Mark uh, 7, verses 9. What did Jesus say in Mark 7, 9? He said, and he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own traditions. You see, this is exactly what Catholic Church do. They reject the commandments of God so that they can keep their traditions. They can keep their traditions and say, ah, this is what uh, blah, blah, blah we do. You reject the word of God to keep your traditions? This is exactly what the Catholic Church does. And it's not a true church. This is a false church and you should stay away from it. And be saved because salvation comes only by faith in Jesus Christ. Faith alone. Faith in what Jesus did for you at the cross. What did Jesus do for you at the cross? Jesus died for your sins. While you are still sinners, Christ died for you. He shed his blood so that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Do you understand that? So all you need to do is just to believe that it was all for you. And you accept that atonement and you confess it to God in prayer. You just tell him, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. And I receive this atonement with all that I am. Once you do that, my friends, you're saved. Stay away from these false churches, and I'll keep on exposing most of them so that you can be able to understand. My desire is not to show people how bad they are, but is to show people the way of the truth, the way of righteousness. Hope this has been a blessing to you. You can share to other people. You can... Uh, like uh, the video and also you can subscribe to watch more whenever we post new videos. God bless you and have a blessed time. See you in the next one.